sisters and brothers, show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. Come on, show me what democracy looks like. On your feet, one more time. Show me what democracy looks like. All right. Sisters and brothers, I get the feeling this is going to be part representative assembly and part rally. And I know, and I know you're good at rallies. You turned out thousands of members at sites in every part of this state. And you know what? I cannot wait for Saturday. What about you? Saturday, a rally to say, not on our watch. Not on our watch is collective bargaining being dismantled. Not on our watch are we going to be treated as second-class citizens. And not on our watch is greed going to triumph over equity and fairness. Saturday, an opportunity to turn a moment into a movement, an opportunity to establish once and for all the union movement isn't going any place. An opportunity, an opportunity to stand with our sisters and brothers in Wisconsin. Can't wait for Saturday. Can't wait for Saturday. It will be our opportunity to stand with our sisters and brothers in Wisconsin. Let's see if you are ready for that. If I say, who are we? We are Wisconsin. That's good. I didn't hear UFT. We're working at it. Who are we? We are Wisconsin. Who are we? We are Wisconsin. Who are we? Okay, we're feeling it now, we're feeling it now. You know, in Wisconsin, Ohio, Indiana, New Hampshire, and too many other states, hard right politicians aim to dismantle the core of collective bargaining, shifting either, even greater power and wealth into the hands of their political backers. Right here in New York, tax caps and budget cuts, tax breaks for the wealthy while freezing or cutting payments to poor school districts, attacks on collective bargaining and attempts to destroy the fairness created by seniority. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, the battle has never raged more openly. The battle has never raged more deceptively and the battle has never raged closer to home. But I'm not standing here, I'm not standing here to analyze what's wrong with the scenario being painted about labor unions, about workers, about unions. These are the people you represent and you know it better than any. You live it every day. No, I'm here to say loud and clear one more time. We will not be intimidated. We will not be manipulated. We will not be divided. And we will not be moved, not moved, not moved from standing with our sisters and brothers in the Buffalo Teachers Federation. Seven years without a contract, the longest in New York State not move from standing with our sisters and brothers at the City University here in New York and our locals in Rochester and Syracuse, all without contracts, or at the UFT, our largest local, 18 months without a contract, and not move from standing with our sisters and brothers in the Jamestown Educational Support Personnel Association, just 55 members, but each one standing strong nearly two years without a contract. Today, 
Today, over 180,000 NYSIT members in more than 280 bargaining units, that's nearly half of our in-service members, are working without contracts. There are 15,000 fewer teachers and support professionals working now than two years ago, and there are over 10,000 more receiving layoff notices as we stay here today. Shared sacrifice, that's 180,000 examples of shared sacrifice and 25,000 more examples of people who endure personal sacrifice every day. What can the wealthiest New Yorkers show me? They are suffering from the extension of the Bush tax cuts. Perhaps the hardship of not having the New York State income tax surcharge extended. Give me a break. We're supposed to worry about the wealthy leaving New York. They aren't leaving New York. The working poor and the middle class who've lost their jobs are the ones who are leaving New York. <laughs> leaving New York because of abuses on Wall Street and in the banking industry, not because of anything they did. Working families want to stay, but they can't because equity and fairness no longer defines our great state. They want to stay to get their chance at the American dream, but it's being taken away from them by an escalating concentration of wealth in the hands of a few. And let's not stop, let's stop the nonsense. It's not work agreed or public employee greed or union in greed that caused this economic mess. It was started with Wall Street's greed and the banking industry's greed. <laughs> is there a deficit in Washington? Well, of course there is. Congress passed and President Obama accepted the Bush tax cuts for the wealthy. Is there a deficit in Wisconsin? Of course there is. Governor Walker gave $140 million in tax breaks to the rich and then calculated a $137 million deficit. Man's been drinking too much of that tea. <laughs> is there a deficit? Is there a deficit in New York State? Of course there is. But if we created a truly progressive income tax, instead of granting tax breaks to the wealthy, there would not be. That would wipe out a big chunk of that deficit and create the revenues to address the hardships facing New York's neediest and most vulnerable. You know the only number, the only number rising faster than the number of homeless children living in poverty in America is the number of billionaires. Shared sacrifice, let's take a quick look. Let's look at homeless children. The numbers are sobering and frightening. 16 million children in our great country are homeless. Nearly one in four leave for school from the home of a relative or a neighbor, from a motel room, or from a night spent in the family car washing and dressing the next morning in a big box store. Now let's look at corporate America. Let's look at GE, our country's largest corporation. <laughs> GE reported over $14 billion in worldwide profits. More than five billion of them accumulated right here at home. And GE paid how much in taxes? Nothing, zero, zilch. Better than that, they got a $3.2 billion tax benefit on top of it. You know, in the 1950s, American corporations paid 30% of federal taxes. In 2009, 7%. According to the International Monetary Fund, out of 33 what they define as advanced economies, the United States ranks worst of the worst ahead of only Singapore in terms of income disparity between the rich and the poor. Shared sacrifice, 
You tell me, but I don't think so. You know, a lot has happened since we met in D.C. last year, and sadly, not much of it good. In Washington, Congress has moved significantly to the right with many, more often than not Republicans, but not all, succumbing to the nectar of the Tea Party. Now, I would say moving away from a progressive agenda, but frankly, the two years preceding the 2010 elections didn't offer much to call progressive. I don't know about you. Well, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I can say that beyond a limited few, Senator Schumer and Gillibrand, members of Congress like Steve Israel, Tim Bishop, Paul Tonko, Yvette Clark, some others, but not too many politicians had voices that were loud or clear or decisive on our issues. You know, I noticed a lot of that, um, how could I say this, standing in the vicinity of labor, like, um, like I'm with you, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> Let's be clear, whether you are in the White House or a State House, the song goes like this, solidarity forever, not solidarity when convenient or solidarity from a distance, whether you are in the White House or a State House, equity and fairness must come before posturing and expedience. And whether you are in the White House or a State House, if you wait for an election year to stand shoulder to shoulder with labor, you may find yourself standing alone. But let me also be clear, but let me also be clear, while we expect more, much more for those in office, and will demand so in respectful but forceful ways, that doesn't mean a walk in the park from some half-baked, tea-soaked excuse for a candidate. <laughs> no one should assume that because we may have significant policy differences with some in office, that they can seize the opportunity and use it to destroy the social contract, indeed the social fabric of our great republic. No, in a democracy, we expect choices, and we will use all our power and effort to influence those choices before we cast our lot with any party or any candidate. So let me say it again, it's not about posturing and expedience, it is about fairness and equity. Do you wanna know what solidarity is? Do you wanna know what solidarity is? Solidarity is Wisconsin healthcare leader and AFT vice president, Candy Owley, sleeping in the Capitol Rotunda in Madison, Wisconsin, night after night away from her family, but with her union family. Solidarity is nice at labor relations specialist Pete Ludden and Baum Rigwood, not waiting for a call, just heading out to Wisconsin to offer their expertise and to fly the NYSED banner. And solidarity is each of you and our thousands of members around the state who answered the call at rally after rally, standing proud with those in other states who we know are fighting not only for themselves, but for each and every one of us. And solidarity will be here in New York, in Times Square, at noon on Saturday. Make no mistake about it, the battle isn't only in the Midwest. The battle isn't only in California and Florida. The battle isn't only in Maine and New Hampshire. The battle isn't only in Rhode Island and New Jersey. The battle is here in New York as well. We see it in the tax on Triborough. We see it in the tax on seniority and pensions. We see it in the tax on due process. 
But also make no mistake about it. The battle will be fought here, and the battle will be won here. Not won or lost here, won here. Let me say it again. Not won or lost here, won here. One because of you. One because of you and each member we together have mobilized. Mobilized in every part of our state, in every place where the truth needs to be told. Where we need to be the voice that speaks truth to power. This year our theme proclaims United We Lead. Sisters and brothers, we can't just say it. We need to shout it out and we need to act it out. Each word is critical. United, we lead. We must be united and remain united to meet the challenges that we face. And it must be we. It can't be left to those in Albany, to those in our regional offices, to the local in the next town, what to the nurse or the teacher in the next classroom. It must be we. And we must lead. We cannot leave it to the politicians, good grief, no. And we cannot leave it to corporate America, hell no. <laughs> and we cannot leave it, we cannot leave it to other workers, other leaders, or other unions. No, it must be united, we lead. You know, we all know too well the last line in the quote that you see as you prepare to leave the uh, Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. It's a quote attributed to Pastor Niemöller following the Nazi rise to power. It goes like this. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. It's based on that that the AFL-CIO's We Are One campaign chose this week to stage demonstrations around the country. April 4th marked the anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968. That year we lost two great leaders, Dr. King and Senator Robert F. Kennedy. Both these great leaders knew to the core of their existence the need for a strong bond between the labor union movement and the civil rights movement. A bond needed if this country is to be a beacon for social justice. As we all know, Dr. King was in Memphis to support striking sanitation workers. He said it best the night before his assassination. Referring to the biblical story of the Good Samaritan, Dr. King put it this way. The question is not, if I stop to help the man in need, what will happen to me? If I do not stop to help the sanitation workers, what will happen to them? That's the question. The sanitation worker in Memphis, Tennessee in 1968, the public employee in Madison, Wisconsin in 2011. Sisters and brothers, this RA and Saturday's rally carry forth the dream that those who came before us understood, fought for, and died for. Standing together, united, we lead, and we make that dream a reality. The dream that a moment can be a movement. That civil rights and workers' rights are one in the same and that the strength of solidarity is the definition of democracy. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. One more time, show me what democracy looks like. God bless the union movement. Thank you, thank you, thank you.